sitting together and the police were talking about Sophia's case, it is then when Anna interjected this particular sentence. She should have been removed. She should have been removed at that at that point, shouldn't she? Yes, and and uh, and what, what I think it, it's when when the, when two people come down and they say that both of them have been raped by the same man, and it's a crime that has occurred a long time ago. The first thing you should do, as you say, separate them and find out what is the relationship between the two women. How come they come together? Because that, to me, I mean, it, not even in Sweden is it often that pe people, two people come down to make complaints about rape. Yes, because in, in any event, and, and you would have the same uh, system in Sweden, that where you have witnesses colluding, um, uh, talking together about um, uh, the same matter where they're all involved is, is a very serious matter and can actually end up in aborting a trial because yes. we, we refer to it as contamination and collusion between the witnesses because then if the evidence comes out to a jury in our jurisdiction here that if the jury can see that witnesses have been colluding and talking about the matter before and possibly getting their stories straight then the jury is going to acquit in a, in a very short order. And I would imagine in, in, in Sweden the same would apply. I, I would think so. I would think so, but I'm not sure. There, are, there is a case, there is a case when, when actually, about, I think it's about 15 years ago, there is a, there is a case when, when the police inter, at the interview had, I think, three or four girls together at the same time. Which, which was an extraordinary, which is an extraordinary thing to do to, to, to have the interview conducted with, uh, with the with the victims, and that record that video by the sorry that that interview was recorded, and since it was so extraordinary, the policeman that did the interview later destroyed the interview because because it, it was proof that that uh, the witnesses had uh, the victims had influenced each other. It yes. was the case. It was the rape case of Billy Butt, and, and right. because of, because of how they treated the victim. Oh, sorry. How they because it, the interview was done in such a way that that uh, the victims were put together uh, in the police interview. From then on, it is said that all video documentation of uh, interviews should be stored. You mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. you can't destroy it like this policeman did. And, and you were saying in relation to Sophia that uh, later on when they did do an interview with her alone, they didn't record that, and that was a concept for all type of interview. Yes, it's yeah. it's 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 this by basic type of interviewing that you do in bicycle theft. Somebody listens to what you say, and then take out what they think is important and put it down on a piece of paper. And, and that the person, and I think Irmeli Kranz has been mentioned for her, she was the person that was in charge of the interview with Sofia. She has been heavily criticized for some very strange remarks on Facebook and on Twitter regarding this case. I don't think her comments are that important. It just proves that she's a politician, not a policeman. But what's important with Irmeli Kranz is that she says that she couldn't find a tape recorder at the police station. That's why she didn't use one. And and I, I, I don't. If That's you can't find if you can't find a, a tape recorder at the police station, then something must be very wrong. Yes, I, I, I have particular difficulties um, in some of the cases that I've had. Um, but where there is a video, it, it can be enormously helpful because it shows you the state of the alleged victim telling her story to police. Um, one of the matters I had was a, a, a young girl, she was about eight or ten years of age, and she was being interviewed by a detective sergeant, and he was actually touching this child and saying, did he hit you here or here? And you could see the child cringing. The child didn't want to answer the question. The video, um, the transcript doesn't show you this. But the video shows you all of the body language 
of the person being interviewed and it is so helpful because it shows you what exactly is happening apart from the words being spoken. And, and that's why it's, it's, it's a very, very um, cruel thing for the defence to be faced with a case where the first interview was never video recorded. I, I think that's, that's a real tragedy for, for a defendant to be in that position because they don't know what the questions were asked, they don't know exactly how the questions were answered when the result comes out in this form of concept for or summary that, that was done. Um, and I think that's, that's um, in, I believe that Sweden has um, regulations in place, operational procedures where this should happen, must happen, but in this case it didn't happen, and I think that's a tragedy. But you have to remember, it is the situation is this. It's, it's, I spoke to a senior criminal investigator. He says it's, it's very common that it is just summaries. And the reason, according to him, uh, that there are these summaries, uh, if you look at, for instance, Anna's interview, uh, it's three pages long. It took about an hour. If you look at, at uh, Donald's or, or Johannes Wallström's interview, it's about the same length, but it's 23 pages long. So, the, if the, the person that does conducts the interview is also responsible normally for printing the interview. So, it, it is a hell of a lot more work for the policeman to actually do a transcript of, of a tape-recorded interview than to do yes. a summary. Exactly. So, it's, it's, just, it's just because to save to save uh, time, they do it. It's not to, to actually increase uh, justice or, or make a better investigation. They do. And it's, it's, there are some, uh, the, the Swedish, uh, what do you call it, the National Police Board and, and the prosecutors, prosecutors' offices, they have made two investigations on how rape investigations are done in Sweden. And they have made this recommendations, what should, how it should be done. You should video record every statement from, from a rape victim, especially the first interview. Because the first interview, that's the one you use to base everything else on. If you don't get that thing right, you will probably get it wrong. Yeah, and you cannot, that, that leads on. You, mm. I, I, I want to actually just interject here because I, I really want to talk to um, talked about the other evidence other than the police uh, statement and a statement to the police. Uh, and and, and, and the, this other evidence, it really does involve you because you are the 10th witness, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, it's my understanding that, uh, that, that Anna uh, has, might have, is said to have destroyed evidence. Yes. Can you talk about that? Sure. Uh, when I first got involved in the case, uh, it sounded strange when I read about it in the papers. It, so I, so, and I thought, okay, I have to look into this because I want to know what has happened because I follow, I follow all cases because of my work. Uh, and I didn't want it to be it was going, it goes, I didn't want to end up like a false accusation because I knew that would have very dramatic effects because everybody would then say, look, all women are making false accusations. So I was looking very hard to find evidence that Julian was guilty. <clears throat> and very quickly, uh, I saw all these things that said, mm, it, looks, it looks like he's not guilty. And then I found, I was looking for something on the internet, and then I found a, a blog called AnnaArdinBloggy.se, which is a mini-blog, just like Twitter. It's, it's a Swedish copy of Twitter. And, and, I, and I could see on this particular blog, there were comments by Anna uh, from around the time of the alleged crime. And when I compared her blog to her, her own Twitter blog, I could see they were identical, identical, except for these three comments that were taken out. And I thought that was very strange, that somebody has taken three comments out of Twitter that all are connected to Julian Assange and the Crayfish Party 
and how Anna felt about it. I didn't pay that much attention because I thought, well, somebody in, on the internet must have seen this and somebody's going to write about it. And I, it's, I sat around for something like seven or eight days waiting for something to happen and nothing happened. Uh, and then I wrote, <laughs> there is another blog which Anna Dean is, is present on. It's called the Rebella blog. They had written an article about what had happened at the police station. So I thought, well, I'm going to check Anna. So I wrote a comment on that particular article. And the comment has to be, I think you call it moderated. Somebody has to approve the comment. So I wrote a comment on the 8th of September, and nothing happened. It was sitting there until the 13th of September. Then my comment was looked at, and it was immediately deleted. What and was your I, comment? I, it, my comment was uh, something like, it looks like it's a false accusation because there are these tweets that Anna Adina said, blah, 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 she's, I mean, she's, like, she's sitting outside with uh, the, the coolest, smartest people. And I said, it looks like it's a false accusation. And this is the evidence, and it's around. That was taken out. And then I said, okay. Uh, so I wrote another comment saying exactly where on the net, the, the net address on the, where these blogs, uh, comments were. And within half an hour, that comment was deleted too. And then an hour, an approximately an hour later, Anna's blog went down. Uh, the whole blogging network, by the way, went down. And when it came back online at 4 o'clock in the morning on September 14th, these three comments that were deleted from Twitter were also deleted from Anna's, uh, from Anna's 